Hi everyone and welcome back. In this video, we'll be unboxing the 190th scale Dovin Wolf by Amazing Cast. They are quite a well-known brand by now for making a lot of 1100 and 190th scale kits, particularly the Stardust Memories line of kits. But it's actually my first time doing Amazing Cast, so I was quite eager to get this kit. And if you know me, you know that I just like anything that's, you know, chunky. So when I saw this kit, I knew I had to get this. This kit retails for about £170, and it's a heavy kit as well, so it's not exactly cheap once it's in your hands. Looking at the side of the box, it shows the inner frame, and advertising the use of a full inner frame, which is a bit misleading, as it doesn't actually have a full inner frame, but I'll get into that in, uh, later. So let's take away the sleeve and look inside. Here you get two separate boxes. It's pretty plain looking and nothing special. Opening up the first box, it is all resin in here and all the parts packed together which is quite unusual but the parts aren't damaged in any way. The casting looks pretty clean and I really like the look of the old school beam saber here. There's also a lot of big parts in here. Just for context, the Dovin Wolf itself is already a big suit and having it in 190th scale makes it about the same size of a 172nd scale model kit. Here is a photo comparing it to the RX-78. The second box has a few more resin parts, and in particular more delicate parts like the head fins for example. And then here are the circle model inner frames that all the amazing cast kits used, as well as most of the SH Studio kits. The whole runner is designed to make a full inner frame for the kit, but it's never actually used like that. I don't think there exists a kit that's actually using the full inner frame. They all just use parts of the runner as joints, basically. Next is a sheet of generic water slides. I don't know if you find it annoying, but they never provide the decals that were used in the sample photos, and you always just get some random ones. I do get why that's the case, and it's because they usually outsource the painting, and those people just use whatever they want, but it makes it difficult to match exactly to the sample photos. Next, you get a bunch of accessories. Here you get the plastic tube, uh, rubber tubes, brass rods, magnets, and wires. Annoyingly, the rubber tube that is used as energy cable is not long enough. It's supposed to be about twice as long according to the manual, but yet it's too short. Onto the manual itself, it is pretty nice quality, although the sample photos are too dark to see clearly, and it could do with a few more photos of the individual sections as well. Next is a list of parts. Make sure to check if you've got all the parts, as I've got a few missing parts. And some parts are from the Silver Bullet. Uh, if you didn't know, the Dovin Wolf and Silver Bullet are basically the same kit, so they share a lot of the parts. And next is the instruction. And this is the bit that I have the most complaints with. Overall, the steps are really simple to follow, but there's quite a few errors regarding the frame parts. So much so that I'll just list them here for people who are building the same kit. This part and the main body, you need to cut the sides off, which it doesn't tell you to do so. In this part, you need to cut the small tabs off, and not the big ones. These parts here are numbered wrong, and should instead be 8 and 9. These are not labelled, and should be 39 and 45. And for the knee joint here, I find that you can't really close them together. But interestingly, I can close the sides properly when I don't use the side frame pieces. So as you can see, there are numerous oversights in the manual, and it just seems rushed and not well thought out. That alongside having parts for another kit just feels like they are just putting out kits haphazardly. The building experience is pretty good though. A lot of the parts can fit nicely without glue and some have locking mechanisms to secure different parts together. But on the other hand, you also get pieces that have absolutely no connection point. For example, the waist here. You know the weight of the whole kit is hinging on these parts, but there are no connections for these halves, which seems ridiculous. So pinning these parts together is a must, and I'm doing two pins just for safety. Here I show a bit of the assembly so you can see what it's like. Mm -hmm. 
And this shoulder part is where you also need to use the rubber tube that they provide. But the problem with using rubber tube quickly arises, as you can see, because it's hollow and soft, it is so easy to bend and thus difficult to have the desired shape. On top of that, there's no way you can paint it. The paint will just flake off with the slightest bend. I have no idea why they didn't just provide a metal wire instead. So I bought some aluminium wires to replace the tubes. Just make sure if you're getting them as well, that they are aluminium so that's the easier to cut and bend and the wires for this kit is 3.5 millimeters and here i'm trying to improve the connection with the rival you can see that the handle just goes into an empty space so you can't really pin it one fix for that is you can fill the gap up with putty just make sure you fill it quite high so that the handle will press against the putty Once it's cured, you can just do your normal pinning. Nice and solid. So here is how the kit looks assembled, with some pinning, but no glue, as you would expect. Details are great and assembly is pretty straightforward, but yet it suffers from a balancing problem as the backpack is just way too heavy for the knees. So I would probably have to lock the knees into position so that it doesn't just bend backwards. This is one of the problems I always have with heavier kits as well. And that's why the need to make movable joints, especially in areas that bear weight like the legs and hips. I just don't think anyone is going to be posing the kit after painting. So like I've said many times, I would just prefer kits to have less moving joints. And it's okay to have it on parts like the head, arms, etc. In here, even the chest is able to move up and down. So with the backpack on, it just pulls the chest back. So I have to lock that part up too. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll probably start doing this kit around May or June. But in the meantime, I gotta finish the PG Sandrock first. So look forward to that. And I'll see you in the next one.